Thanks everyone for waiting. Um, we're gonna go ahead and go through a few slides on security operations management, and then we're gonna dive into a demo. And before we get started, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of background on Cerna Solutions. We are a uh, partner with ServiceNow. We have a CSAT score of 9.5 out of 10, we're very proud to say. We do a lot um, with security, we do a lot with GRC, but we also do uh, the core modules. We do CMS, legal, HR, facilities. All of our consultants have several years in uh, the ServiceNow platform. Um, so you know, we have varying uh, interest throughout. Um, on the right-hand side, you can post your questions throughout. We'll go ahead and answer those after uh, the demo. So feel free to put those questions in as we go through. So my name is Tom O'Neill. Um, I've been doing GRC and security for a couple years now, uh, inside and outside of ServiceNow. So I've worked with uh, CISOs um, around the country to uh, increase productivity and keep track of all of their security incidents and their vulnerabilities um, and work uh, closely on the governance risk and compliance as well. So today we have three key areas in security management. We have enforcement, detection, and visibility. I've thrown in a few examples of some of the tools that you're likely familiar with, but as you'll see on the next slide, there's numerous tools out there. So let's take a look at this huge wave of security noise, and that's exactly what's happening today. We have constant noise. We have to somehow manage this noise, and I'm sure you have tools in place for detection, enforcement, and visibility of your lar large amounts of events each day, but we need to somehow collate this information into something meaningful and be able to take action on that data. Today, you're probably doing this with spreadsheets and emails and even discussions over the cubicle walls. So let's take a look at the next phase in security operations management, response. You can do away with your spreadsheets, your post-it notes, and your emails. We're able to collect all of this information from your existing applications into one manageable, actionable solution. Currently, there's no other solution on the market that's able to do this with the power of ServiceNow with uh, business service maps with your CMDB, your workflows, and tasks. So why even do this today? Well, let's go ahead and take a look on the next slide. A few organizations that haven't done this and are regretting it. I'm sure most of these are familiar with you, but uh, you know, I'm sure you've all done some home remodeling, online purchasing, probably reluctant to use your credit cards at certain uh, Home Depot or other retailers. Sony's had huge hacks around the gaming community. What does this all mean? It's rattled the consumers, the very people that you're trying to sell to. And you don't want the bad publicity or the fallout. So as you can see from the previous slide, we've shown you a few companies that have been in the news recently. But whether or not you're in the news, there's a real cost of being breached. The average cost of a data breach is $3.7 million. These costs may be associated with rectifying that breach or the cost that Home Depot or others have to pay for your personal credit card protection. So let's ask ourselves a question. Are we secure and are things getting better or worse? Now I ask a lot of my customers this, and very often they can't ask, I'm sorry, they can't answer that or they can't quantify whether it's getting better. That's because they really have no overall visibility. It's all in the email, spreadsheets, and so on. So let's drill down into a few of the examples of some problems I'm sure you guys are seeing today. First problem, you're missing your critical incidents. So the way that companies are doing this today, it's not trackable or actionable. So you're losing track of everything. Let me show you an example of what this means to an organization. Here you can see some of the average times to identify a breach and contain that breach. 70 days to find it, 200 days to fix it. That's just unacceptable, unfortunately. Uh, with ServiceNow, being able to track these critical incidents now, we can start collecting the information to reduce the time to contain and eradicate these breaches. So let's have another look at some uh, another problem that some of the organizations are having today. The breaches due to existing vulnerabilities. Remember, uh, lots of times these vulnerabilities are sitting there for months. In this slide, you can see we have several uh, data collection applications feeding into the vulnerability scan database. So we can collect and compile all of these vulnerabilities on your network and contain them in one place. Now we can eliminate the precursors to our breaches. Remember, we can bring the scanning in from multiple different tools, you know, Splunk and Qualys and other tools as well. So with security operations, 
we can use the information collected within our CMDB along with relational data and we can see what critical business services might be affected. Is it a credit card application or a major service or a test server not involved in any critical business applications? Again, this helps me prioritize my vulnerabilities and schedule my remediations. So let's take a step back and let's take a look at how ServiceNow is going to collect all of this information using security operations management. It's really divided into two key areas, vulnerability response and security incident response. Now they have relationships with one another, but they can be completely independent of one another as well. So let's take a look at vulnerability response. This is where the integrations with your scanning tools and the national vulnerability database are going to help identify the vulnerabilities in your network and help you manage and prioritize remediating those items. You know, this could be imported from any, you know, any of those scanning tools out there and bring that data directly into ServiceNow. The National Vulnerability Database, or NVD, is where all of your systems uh, report their latest vulnerabilities to software, et cetera. So it's, it's a, a national compiled database. From here, we're going to go ahead and step into security incident response. So this is how you can handle all of your security incidents going forward, whether they were created from a vulnerability or something as simple as leaving the data center door wide open, theft of data, um, employee issues, a bug that has just come out today that your scanners haven't even picked up yet. So all of these workflows are designed with the NIST 800 best practices to help eradicate these issues. So it gave you a little bit of an overview of security operations management and how we collect all this data. Now, by collecting all of this in ServiceNow, you can get better insights into your security incidents, view the SLAs, risks, and priorities. These are all extremely powerful, powerful to your organization. So let's talk a little bit about why we're here today. Why is CERNA doing this webinar? This isn't just about selling a solution. As you know, you have to have the industry's best practices in place, and we've done a lot of security and GRC implementations, and we have a wealth of experience in the security operations arena. We're able to integrate with other source data and the wave of security tools out there. So we're here to help navigate this arena with you and make sure you're successful with security operations management. Please, no more spreadsheets for your security team. So we're gonna go into the demo in just a second. Um, but I want to kind of set the stage for what you're about to look at. So we're going to start off by assuming one of our scanners has identified a vulnerability in our network or the National Vulnerability Database found an issue. We'll take a look at the vulnerabilities from the NVD to see how that affects our organization. And from there, we'll then take you into how we respond to that vulnerability. We'll be creating a security incident based on that vulnerability, which you can create um, those security incidents for a number of reasons, but we're going to do it off this vulnerability, and then we'll show you how we track that incident through its life cycle. So let's go ahead and step into the demo. So as we just mentioned, the first point is a vulnerability alert or some piece of information from the NVD database. So let's take a look at the vulnerability database right now. And these are all of the recently published items. You can see these were just brought over uh, within the last few days. You can actually set the schedule on how often it downloads these updates. And then we can go ahead and take a look at the items that found on my system. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the actual vulnerable items. So these are items that are actually on my system through the business service map that it is mapped to the vulnerability database and said, okay, these are issues on your servers. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and click into one of these items and just show you a few of the details. This will show all of the, the software that is vulnerable, uh, what vulnerability it ties back to in the database. And from here, I can actually create a security incident. I can create a change record if we're going to update that server. So let's go ahead and click on Create Security Incident. And as this follows through here for a second, you'll see at the top of the screen, we have a severity calculator that has run on this. Now, if this was set up for this specific item, it would automatically set the risk, the impact, 
the severity and the priority. Um, it also sets who it gets assigned to based on certain criteria. And then you can see the actual incident is created right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click down into that security incident. And at the top here is, I mentioned before, the NIST 800 um, workflows. We actually have the different states um, right here to help us along the path to complete this entire uh, security incident workflow. So we have analysis, contain, eradicate, recover, review, and close. You can see all the, the information, any category or subcategory information we want to assign to that, who it's getting assigned to, uh, a short description, and then we have a knowledge base that will fill in based on the short description to hopefully help eradicate that issue or take care of that incident. And if I keep scrolling down here, we'll see general information on them, what the impact and priority is, what the description might be, any related records, like I said, we can tie this back to a change request or a problem record. And then one thing that a lot of people forget about, but is very important, is the post-incident review. Um, you know, you want to say, what did we do good? What can we do better next time to help either um, get through this security incident or make sure that we don't have any similar ones in the future? And then if I keep scrolling down, we have any response tasks or task SLAs that we want to see. Um, some of these security incidents might have to have several tasks. I may have, do I have to contact the FBI because we got hacked? Do I have to contact the CEO? Um, do I have to run a, a scan on my servers when I'm done? So we can view all of that information and have it all in one spot so we can go back to it later on. And obviously we can have any affected CIs that are tied back to that and impacted services as well, or outages, and we can even assign risk to those. So let's go ahead and click back into our home page. And here you're going to see our, our heat maps, our open security incidents. And we have, you know, for those of you that are very familiar with ServiceNow, there's the reporting is just enormous amount of uh, data that we can compile and view in multiple ways. So it, it has everything here uh, related to security incidents, vulnerabilities, and we have a lot of details. You can click down into everything as well to get more information, as I'm sure most of you are aware that have used ServiceNow before. So with that, that concludes the demo. I'm gonna go ahead and take some questions, um, or go ahead and answer those questions for you. So give me one second to pull those up. If you guys have any questions, feel free to uh, put those in as well. So we have one here. It says, can I import vulnerabilities from other sources, such as Nessus or Qualys? And the answer, the simple answer is yes. Um, you can, you know, Nessus and Qualys, they both have APIs that we can integrate with and bring those into the vulnerable items table and import that information directly in. And then another question we have here was, how does this fit in with the GRC application on ServiceNow? Well, for those that are familiar with um, the control structures on a lot of the, uh, you know, whether you're doing uh, healthcare or financial controls, depending on what control structure you have to follow, you have to go and run uh, scanning on your network, uh, usually about monthly, sometimes more often than that. So you can tie those vulnerability items and, and scans back into GRC to say that you're actually completing that. Um, GRC is a big evidence locker, so I like to call it, where we're gathering all this information for your auditors. So working closely to have all those security incidents and vulnerabilities tied in. Another question was, can we customize the forms to add in additional fields? Absolutely. Uh, with everything in ServiceNow, um, all of the forms are customizable with bringing in different vulnerability um, scan data, we are usually adding in additional um, scanners as well to make sure that all of that works properly, or I'm sorry, different fields to make sure that all of that uh, data gets imported into ServiceNow. And then last question I have here was, uh, does this integrate with other ServiceNow applications such as change and incident? And yes, I showed earlier there, uh, you can, integrate this with a change record. If you have a whole bunch of vulnerabilities that will be taken care of when you run a Windows update or a different patch, 
um, you, you'll have to, you know, you can tie that directly back into a change record or a problem record as well. And then somebody asked about a, a Nextpose integration. Yes, so that API I, I have dealt with about a year ago and that I know we can pull data out of that and bring that directly into service now. Um, most of, pretty much any application we can integrate with, it really depends on uh, whether they have an API, which I'll tell you 99% of them do, or we actually take in files that are exported out of those systems as well, and we can import those as well. All right, with that, I'm going to go ahead and conclude this and let you guys get back to the rest of your day. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to email them. Our, my email address is on the screen right now, or visit our website as well as give us a call at any time. Uh, we'd be happy to help you guys through this process. Uh, we know both the GRC and the security operations arenas extremely well, but we also need to know that sometimes they're very hard for people to navigate through. So let us uh, help you through that. And uh, with that, I will end this call and thank you very much.